take it away, Patty, Christy, and Michael. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today for the October edition of Tuesdays with CKLS. Um, I'm Michael Adamic. I'm the Library Technology Manager at here at CKLS, and I will let the others introduce themselves, too. I'm Christy Snyder, and I'm going to be doing the uh, email blast, e-blast portion of this CKLS with libraries. Good afternoon. My name is Patty Collins, and I'm the services consultant here at CKLS, and um, I'm going to help guide you through some good things that you need to know to, to create a good flyer that is easy for your patrons to read and understand. So um, we're going to round robin a little bit today. Um, both Michael and Christy do a lot of training on library aware. And uh, so um, they're kind of your local experts, um, but your other experts are the other people that are in the room and the librarian down the road because they use it in a practical way on a consistent basis. So if you happen to not be able to reach one of us at some point, um, or if you just have a question, you want somebody to take a look at a flyer, send it to one of us, but also send it to the librarian down the road because they're going to be able to interpret what you're looking for. So Michael, if you want to take it away. Yep. Okay. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that there's a lot of stuff you can do in LibraryWare and we're just going to be covering some really, really basic things. So if you if you feel like you need a little bit more um, training, uh, let me know, and we can set up a time to do some one-on-one -on -one activities. But um, first, I want to start off and just show you how to do some really basic things, like creating a an item in LibraryWare. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay. Alrighty. So um, when you first log into LibraryWare, you will get to the, the welcome screen, which you can see here. And it shows you the newest items that LibraryWare designers have created. And you can see that there's the option to click create to see these to start making these items right away but if you create an item straight from the home page here it it's a little bit harder to get it into your your saved folder and it's kind of hard to keep things organized so um, what we recommend you do is as soon as you log in go straight up here in the upper corner and click on folders This is Patty. We're experiencing a couple of technical difficulties that we are um, currently fixing. So, you know, life is fun. Here we go. We got a full size screen, Michael. Sorry about that. That's all right. There we go. Michael, better? we got a good screen. Okay. Thank you. That's what I get for trying to move the window. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you log in, you'll see these, these, um, these are the newest items and let's go up here to folders. And when you log in, that's the best thing to do is just go straight to folders and folders are organized by your own home library. So a couple of our really big libraries have several folders if they've got several departments, but most of you will only have one folder and it will be named after your community. And if you're having trouble finding yours, you can go to the magnifying glass over here and search by name. I'm just going to do a search for CKLS because that's what we're going to start with. And if I want to create an item, I don't want to click this green create folder button up here because that will just create another place for files to be collected. First, I want to make sure I go to my folder. So I'm going to the CKLS tech manager folder by clicking on it. And once you're in here, you'll see any items that you've already created or that someone else has created in your folder. 
And this is where we want to click on create item, the green button right here. And by doing it this way, it saves the item directly into your folder. Michael? Yes. This is Gail. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Can you move your mouse a little bit slower for those out here with a little bit slower tech speed? It won't make us quite as dizzy. Sure. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and click on create item so we can see what that looks like. And as you can see, when you click on create item, it shows you all of the newest items again, just like on the home screen. So if you want to see what the most recent additions are to the library work collection, you can scroll through these. But since we're looking at specifically event flyers right now, let's do a search for story time. And you can search in this search bar up here for any specific type of flyer that you want. You can also search by themes. So for example, if you're doing something that's themed on fantasy or dragons, you can do a search for that as well. It's going a little slow today, I noticed, so it's just gonna take a bit of time. Now you notice when you do a search that there are lots of different sizes and types of, of flyers and things. So these top ones right here, they all say widgets and those are mainly used for websites. But if you know specifically the type of flyer that you want to create, you can go over here on the left hand side and look through the formats and you can choose which format specifically you want to use. So since we're doing some event flyers, let's scroll down and right here, there's flyer events. If you'll notice in these previews, at the bottom of them, they have a gray box that says placeholder. It might be hard to, to read, but if you see a gray box at the bottom of the template, that means that that is a place where your library's branding will automatically be filled in. Now, if you see any items that don't have the gray box, that means you can't add the um, branding to that flyer. If it's not on there at the beginning, you won't be able to add it later. So if you want that, make sure it's there when you start designing. Most of the event flyers have the gray box at the bottom for branding. So let's go ahead and go through the basics of creating this one. And you'll see if you scroll down to the bottom, it should automatically fill it in with the branding that fits your library. Now, the first thing you want to do once you create an item is go straight to the save box and save your design with a name. That way, if you get called away from the computer or if something crashes, you'll still have your work saved. And it's a good idea to save it periodically as you go. Now, before I show you the basics of how to change things on the screen, I would like to show you how to copy an item that someone else has created and how to change it to fit your library. So now that I've saved it, I'm going to exit this. And let's say I found a library that I really like, their flyers. So I'm going back to all folders. I'm gonna to go to the magnifying glass and search for the library that you want to use an item from. And I'm gonna to go to the main CKLS folder here. So right here, I've got a test flyer and let's say I saw another library using this and I really wanna use it for my library. Um, you don't want to edit the original libraries, obviously because that's something that they're created so what you can do is put your mouse over the original item and the three dots will pop up in the right hand corner of the item. So we'll click on those dots and 
there right at the top you will see an option to copy the item. So we'll click on that. And it's going to ask you to rename this item. So this is for a new item that you're creating that's a copy. And then it asks you which folder you want to copy it to. So just select your home libraries folder from the list. I'm going to put it in my tech manager folder here. So click on your folder and then click copy item. And once it copies it, it takes it you straight to your folder so that you can start editing the item right away. When you first make something, it's not going to show you a preview image, but usually that shows up pretty quickly. So I'm going to click here to go back to the, the item that we just copied. And now that it's a copy, we can change it as much as we want, and it's not going to affect the original libraries. OK, so we've got an item created. If we copied it from another library, you'll want to make sure that the branding matches your library because it might still have the old library's branding on there. So for that, you can go over to the left-hand side and go right here where it says branding. Click on branding. And it shows you a list of all the different libraries and their logos and contact information on the side here. So find your library. Unfortunately, they're not all organized in alphabetical order, but they're somewhat. And then once you find your library, go ahead and click and drag the branding on top of the old branding. If you'll notice, if I haven't put my mouse right over the top, the branding just stays completely green. But once I get my mouse over there, it turns white. And once it turns white, if I release it there, it will replace the branding. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So now we've got the branding in there. I'm going to scroll back up here. And just really quickly, I'll go through the really basic things of editing something. So if you want to copy this from an, copy something from another library, you can just change the text and the words and a few images and make it your own. Again, if you want to do anything more advanced, let me know and I can set up time to train with you one on one. But on the left hand side here, you can click on any of these items, text, images, or shapes. And then what you do is you just click and drag items and release your mouse over the top of the of the thing that you're creating and it will add that item in so if you want to add text you can drag any of these over there if you want to add new images you can click and drag book jackets regular images or other things and you can also add shapes i'm going to go ahead and delete this extra text here by going up in the right and clicking the trash can after selecting the item you want to delete. So I'm going to change. If you use Microsoft Word, it's, it's kind of similar to that as far as changing text, text boxes. So what you do is you just double click on a text that's already on the screen and you can type in the screen, type in the box to change it. And let's say we want to use an image that fits our specific library. So we can click on an image. And if you go up here, there's the image, a little icon of two arrows that are crossed. And that is the swap image option. And we're going to click on that. And the screen that pops up here shows you uh, images that other libraries have used in their um, recent designs. And you can do a search for keywords if you want to look for something that's already been used. They also have a nice library of stock images. You can search by keyword for those. Or if you want to upload your own image, go down here near the bottom and it, you can select an image and upload it directly from your computer. I'm just going to choose this one right here. Click select image. 
and it will put it in the, the box. You can click and drag to make it fit a little bit better if you want to. And then hit the enter key or click accept up here. And you can use that same process to change almost everything on a, a design. Um, it's already taken some time, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let Patty take over from, from, from me for now. Good afternoon. Um, glad you're here. Uh, Michael did a great job of, of walking us through those basic steps of Library Aware. And I watched a few things in the comments. Um, one that um, I forgot about till yesterday I was in here because I don't use library where on a daily basis like many of you do is if you get up and leave your computer library where is going to ask you did you really meant to leave it <laughs> and if you don't respond um, sometimes it will kick you out and Amy from Otis pointed that out that um, saving often is important but it's also um, sometimes you will get logged out when you don't mean to um, so one of the things that I'm really gonna gonna focus on is the is the, the elements of the flyer that you're looking for. So um, back when you were in high school, uh, you had to write a, a paper at some point and you had to answer a few questions. Those questions are still the same that we're looking for answers to for um, your flyers. You're looking for the, the what, the who, who does it apply to, the where, of course, um, sometimes the why and sometimes the how. But the first three are essential to a flyer: the the where, the what, and the why, uh, and the um, and the when are the the key things that you need to be able to um, relate to your patrons. Michael showed a couple of really really clean flyers. I'm going to show you some examples of some things that are a little more challenging, and we're going to determine why those are a little more challenging, and we're going to look at um, some. Um, templates that, that we have out there to um, to share with you if you're not a library aware user and I don't know if we have anybody here that that isn't so I'm going to take you on the journey of Patty trying to share her screen which is always a whole lot of fun and we are going to open here okay right now you should be seeing my email yes. and I want to um, click on uh, a couple of examples of some flyers that um, might be really exciting. This one, um, can you see something that says hot and scenic design? Yes, we can see that. Okay, so um, there's a few simple things in terms of flyer making. Can you You're zoom looking... in a little bit? Oh, yes. Thank you. You're looking for um, the, the, the three things that you need that have the most, the, the what, the when, and the where, um, should be the biggest things that someone searches for in a flyer. So I do know what I'm, I'm looking for because I see giant, um, giant words, but I see an awful lot of giant words. Um, so you're looking for clean lines. Um, you should use um, no more than three fonts when you're building the flyer. And Library Aware is already intuitive to that. It won't give you more than three unless you change them yourselves. And then you're also looking for um, images that are related to your um, um, information that you want to share, but that don't detract. So um, this, this nice fiery creature back here um, sort of takes over and I'm not even sure what I'm looking for here. Now, however, they did give me a few things that I need here at the bottom. We have a telephone number and I do have a website. So I can find more information, but I'm actually not even sure what I'm looking at. And so if you take a look back at your flyer and you go, um, what am I telling my patron? If it's not um, immediately obvious to you, it's time to back up and take some elements off or to start over. Uh, Michael also found me another one that um, really shows us um, some, um, gives us some good examples. This is a folk music festival um, we can find out where it is. It's in Princeton, Kentucky at the Fire Training Center. So um, we see that in green text at the bottom. Um, we know what it is up here, but the thing that is most important to me, what it is, is not the first thing that I see. Where do your eyes go? 
straight to the middle of the page where the red where the red text is. If I don't know what Hamfest is, that's not going to help me as a user. So when I zoom out a little bit, you see that they gave me some websites. So I can go here to check out information. I have a contact information. And I know when it is, but I have to look for that. So the, the couple of rules that they broke, one, I have too many colors going on. I have too many fonts going on. And frankly, I have too much going on altogether. I want to also point out on both these flyers that you want to make sure your text is a readable text. The spooky text on the um, haunted house or whatever it was is very hard to read those numbers. I think the phone number at the bottom is 717 but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so you wanna make sure those fun fonts are really fun and they would be really good for like one big word, like welcome, but any of your informational text, you're going to want it to be easy to read and a little plainer. And really when you look at this flyer, the only thing that's in normal text, a small haunt business with big nightmares and getting bigger every year is the only thing on the on the flyer that actually uses really, really basic text that you can search um, and see easily. So um, um, I'm going to scoot back here and I'm going to leave this beautiful flyer behind and I'm going to open up a library aware flyer. This is a blank flyer, um, much like the one Michael shared with you. This one is about Santa story time. Let's get me out of here. Okay. Santa story time. What's really great about this is there we go. Um, we have a, a great graphic at the top. Join us for holiday fun. Okay, that tells me that gives me a little bit of why. Santa story time. That might actually be exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to click right here and I'm going to put in a date and I want to show you one of the things that is important to me. Okay. Of course, the, one of the things that happened right away was the thing I didn't want to have happen. I tried to give it too much text for the box that was there. Now you have a couple of options. You can shrink the size of your text. But if you do, do you lose something? Um, Library Aware will help you just by hitting my enter key. Now I've um, separated my line so I'm able to read that it is on a Saturday. Now I no longer need the comma. Um, now I have my date and time, my date, and I'm able to go ahead and drop my time in here. And then I'm also able to center by going up here to the three little lines. There's an arrow in the drop down next to your font box and I can go right to center. Leave that space. Now you see we have a problem but all we have to do is grab onto this lower box. I can scoot it down. Now I can see my, um, my time again and this additional text box gives me an opportunity to explain more. There, there's a reason the box is so little is because I'm only going to share the details that they really need. It might be bring your letters for the Santa mailbox. It might be um, come dressed in your favorite Christmas sweater, or it might be free hot chocolate and cookies. But you see the family already has an expectation of what they're going to get when they come. It's Santa story time. They know where it is because we have our branding. We know when it is, what time. And then in these little text boxes, I can add a few words here or there, but I'm not going to explain um, a whole paper's worth of, of information on a flyer. Now, when you look at this in its entirety, I'm gonna shrink it down. If I looked at this in a store window um, or in your library window, I'm not going to have to get any closer than three feet to your window to at least have some idea because I have a large appealing graphic and I have large um, fonts that are going to give me a, an idea of what I'm looking at. 
I can pause by it or catch it when I'm walking by to the book drop and I can go, hey, I want to go look closer or um, this might give me enough to know that I don't have to go any further. I'm going to leave library aware for just a minute. And I am going to bring up, hello, my flyers that uh, we made as templates for, okay, go away. Drink. There we go. And pull these up and go big. One of the things that's always available to you are flyers in Word on, um, um, created through CKLS staff that you can use if you're not a library or a person and you want to use uh, Word. Um, what I've created are a few simple examples where things that you can go in and change them directly. So you see at the top of this flyer, Camelot Memorial Library. In big font, I have story time program. Right off the bat, I'm very clear of what you're going to get. You're going to get story time with stories, graphs, science, and more. Who is it for? All ages welcome. When is it? We have the fall 2020 writer, but then we say Wednesdays, 11 o'clock, September through November. We've been very clear. This is a little bit wordy, but in um, traditional story time flyers, and you'll see these on Library Aware, and you'll also see them in the way that they were created long before I was a story time kid. Um, a lot of folks did um, um, the date and then um, a theme. And then you see that I've put placed the branding at the bottom, very much like library where, and you'll notice that we have your full library name, your full library address, your city, state, and zip, a full telephone number. Now, um, those are automatic on library aware, but why is it so important here? Our libraries are about 10 miles apart. And if um, your patrons, um, visit more than one library, it could easily, they could end up with two very similar flyers hanging on their fridge and miss story time on the, on the wrong day by being at their library down the road. So having the, the city and the library name is important. In the same way, it's important when you answer the telephone. If you just answer it library, um, if you do this at a CKL, when you call, when, we, when CKLS calls you, we go, I'm sorry, I forgot which library I called. We do that all the time because we, we get just answering library. So um, think, of, um, think of you as the library and how important your full library name is as you're speaking to your patron, who is also your customer. In each of these examples, you see that I used a different color branding, but they're very much the same. The whole idea is I've already dropped a piece of clip art in that fits the theme, but I've made them all very similar. Um, library name, what are you going to do when you're there? Who can come? When is it? And you're branding at the bottom. Library Aware has done a really good job of creating many of these um, similar type um, flyers that already do this for you. But if that's not a world you're comfortable in and you're more comfortable in a word, word, word world, certainly please use it that way. This one is, is a little more wordy and, and it's for a couple of reasons. One, you see we have Charming Public Library at the top. Visit the library's Facebook each week for a new story. So this is your online with your take and make. They're both included in the same flyer. So Patrons only have to take one thing away. But you'll see here in my instructions, I don't go into great detail. Stop by each week during library hours to pick up your packet. New science or craft activities each week through November 30th. You see how simple the instructions are. If I have more questions, that's the opportunity for me to call the library or step in um, through the front door and say, what else do I need to know? But you see that. I didn't make a whole page of instructions because this is a flyer to announce your program. You can create a set of instructions for that, for that next level. And so this gives you um, some, some use of those elements. Sometimes you need the why 
and sometimes you need the um, the how. And the how in this case is the take and make or join us, join us on the library's Facebook page. So those give you, uh, yes. Can you go back to the haunted house one again when you're ready? I wanted to sure. emphasize Michael's point. Certainly. Um, Michael says in the chat, well, maybe I'll let Michael tell it. Michael, you're gonna talk about um, contrast and easy readability. Yeah, absolutely. So um, something that's important to keep in mind for, um, for readability reasons, especially for accessibility reasons for people that may have some vision challenges, is that um, from this, on that one poster right there, you can see there is a lot of green text on top of that background image, but because there is so many different colors and so much going on in the background, it's very difficult to read the text, even though on top of a plain black background, it would be much easier to read. And then you can also see the award-winning artist is in yellow. Above that is something in red, but it's a darker red and it it's not a strong contrast with the colors around it. And so it's it's much more difficult to read. And that's difficult for us. And if someone had vision, vision challenges, that would be even more, more difficult. And uh, so try to keep that in mind that when in doubt, keep keep the text and everything around the text as simple as possible. And um, you want to pe people to be able to read what is there more than anything else. And Gail says that she has am experiencing some poor vision and the haunted flyer is basically a nightmare to read. So that's telling your customer right off the bat, it's not important enough for you to tell me what I need to know. So therefore I'm not, I'm not going to participate in that activity. You'll notice on the, the three word flyers that I created and also the Santa flyer, um, very um, clean background. And um, there's one thing that, that is the a monetary factor. In order to print this hot and scenic design flyer, one, it's going to take longer running through a printer and it's gonna eat up your toner like nothing. So if you're looking for, if you're looking to get the most bang for your buck, um, plain background, um, s color is certainly okay and, and, and is very attractive, but the more heavy use on color, the more you're going to go through um, on your toner cartridges. Um, and do keep in mind that CKLS can do some printing for you, but something like this, you don't know how it's going to look because our printer is going to look different than yours. So what you think is perfect and coming out of your printer at your desk might not look the same way coming from CKLS. Okay, Christy, do you want to tell us about how to get the word out to everyone easy? Okay, I've had some questions about how to um, come up with the newsletters and the templates. And so I thought I would show you um, some easy ways to get around. Um, Let's uh, make sure, just like Michael showed us, to be in our own folder <clears throat> because that's where we want our newsletter to be. Oh, gracious. Okay. And if I go with KLS School, there's my folder and I'm going to open it up. So you can see earlier I did find a template. Well, let me show you how I did that. Um, I'm going to search uh, Michael, do I just go back to that folder? Um, I think you'll need to click on create item. Oh, that's what I would need. Okay, thank you. So what, what you need to know in LibraryWare, um, their uh, newsletters, you see the newsletter up here next to folders. Those newsletter, newsletters are about um, the novelist uh, that your patrons and you can sign up to get to be subscribed to. So it's not there um, in 
in library speak, I mean in library aware speak, a newsletter is an e-blast. So <clears throat> we do see it over here. And I want, want a fall e-blast template. <clears throat> and you get all kinds of different things. They're really wonderful. And um, they're all labeled e-blast here at the bottom. There are a couple of flyers. And, but I still, uh, that, that seemed kind of messy. I wanted, what I really wanted was maybe a November e-blast. And that's how I came up with the one you saw in my folder. Um, so you would just hit create and it shows up in your folder, my folder. So it'll show up in your folder. And if you look at the three dots, I want to edit this because I want to make it my own. So almost everything in this newsletter can be um, changed to, to fit what you need it to say. Um, it's got the branding up at the top and at the bottom is our address. And I want to make sure that it's the no, uh, November, the connection. Maybe I'll write it in here. So I want to edit that. That's one. Okay, I forget that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write it right here. While Christy is typing, sometimes um, some of the headers or title that are in library wear, the words like November, they're actually an image. So it makes them so they can't be edited. You can't retype them. Yep. And you find that every once in a while. Yeah. Okay. So on my newsletter, I've, I should probably look at one of my other ones, but it's, I think it's what's happening or something like that. And see, I've used this, um, this bar right here already. So I'm going to add me a new uh, section header. And <clears throat> I'm going to choose one. Now, how do you know what that is, the different colors? Um, you've got a swatch here. And it will be um, A, B, C, D. And then when you look over here to change it, you got to get your um, add new. And <clears throat> that's, that's you, you, the color swatch. I, what did I do? Go to the font swatch. The color swatch, there you are, A1, A2. That's how uh, the writing is going to be. That's what you know what color you're using. Um, and if you didn't like this color selection, you can choose a different one. And there's all kinds of different. But this is fallish enough for me, so I'm going to leave it. OK, so my heading here is going to be um, what's happening. And I want it to be in the middle. So I just use my bar up here. Now there's a placeholder here and it can be for whatever you want it to be. Um, let's say uh, we're introducing a, a new librarian. So in my what's happening, I'm going to, um, boy, they, they don't have, oh, there it is. This, 
image, swap image. And it does take a little bit for it to load up. Okay, so probably that person isn't going to be in these images. So you're going to want to select an image from your desktop and I have no idea let's say I've got a really cute picture of my niece so that's the only thing that's going to to show up and you select it and you put it in here and then you could say I'm the greatest aunt in the world Wait a minute, Christy. Yes. I'm the greatest grandma in the world. You can't be the greatest grandma and the greatest aunt. You have now, to pick <laughs> just pick one. I may be the only aunt, great aunt she's got. So then I am the greatest aunt. <laughs> okay. At least the favorite. Work. You're at least the favorite. The favorite. There you go. <laughs> I'm the greatest great great aunt. Okay. Well, I'll give that to you. My nephews aren't as old as your <laughs> brothers and sisters are. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> you can see here, they've just got a whole bunch of Latin. You put your paragraph in there and if it, if it gets longer, I don't know if I can, I'll just maybe. I do. I type Latin. So that's all about my little niece. Um, if if you want your picture to be a little bit bigger, sometimes it will. Um, it will mess with the, um, what do I want to say? The, the spacing? I don't know. The spacing well, or the, formatting? It, the picture will get all wonky sometimes. So what you want to do is there's two buttons up here, fit or fill. Either one helped that. But that's something I learned the hard way. <laughs> I kept losing pictures and they'd look goofy and once you start playing with stuff and, and uh, maybe even read the directions, it helped. So and where can you find the directions? I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. But I'm gonna save this because i am got to find directions now. And if you go over here to the help, and uh, I, let's see, I want to type in um, eblast. You can see they've got titles uh, everywhere about eblast or about anything you want, but um, let's see. I want to promote my events. So you go over here and they're gonna tell you how to use the emails and the different options that you have for the flyers and the posters, um, if that's just what you're gonna send. But you can ask this anything and you will get a written um, example of what you want to know about and you can get a video. Um, and I, actually found i don't know how i got to the one i did but how do i cre create an, an ed edit an e-blast well you can see they've got directions here then they show you and if that wasn't exactly what you needed then you come down here and you've got all kinds of different things to do changing the font the colors adding the image um 
So if you get frustrated and you can't get to one of us, try here first and leave us a message and we'll get right back to you when we can. Christy? Yes? We have a question in the chat. Do they tell you how to send this darn e-blast? I am going to show you that right now. So I'm going back to my uh, e-blast. And you can add, when you, you want to add something new, you come down to each, uh, if you want to show your new books, you'd add that new. And let's say now you need, um, uh, you need a new, let's see, rich text. You, if you're going to type, you want a rich text area. And so those colors again on the color swatch will tell you what color you're going to be doing. We're, we've got uh, the title text. Um, Let's see, I would put it in the wrong place. So let's move it. To move something, you just move it where you want it. Oh, it's going. Well, that must have been what I chose was a, a white background and then an orange background too. Is it interesting? So, Christy, I can make this newsletter longer than what I see on the screen, right? Right. That's what I'm trying to show you. And if this isn't what I wanted, because I, would, I wouldn't do that, you just delete it. Save again. <laughs> and then let's, um, let's add some new rich text. And we'll see you can do it in columns. This is all done, um, you know, if you've got a couple of short uh, additions to your newsletter, you can choose two columns. And so <clears throat> you can put information here and information here, and uh, you can add a header above it. And there you go. So you can keep keep adding things. Okay, so all right. Make sure you save. Every time you add something, save it. It will save your life. <laughs> Peggy's sitting here laughing at me because some funny words come out of my mouth sometimes when this is going on. Okay. So publish to. <laughs> Let's say we want to email this. We can do a test email first, and I do that a lot to um, to Mary Beth and these gals down here, and they proofread for me because you never see. Um, since I'm since I'm it's my school library consultant. That's what they put in the heading, but you can put the newsletter name. Um, If you want someone to be able to reply to you, you put your address there. And this just tells your system it's a friendly thing. And then you put the, the uh, person you want to look at this. And so before it goes out to everybody, you can send a test mail. And, and I usually do that. It's a good thing to do. Um, so let, go back to schedule and oh, we probably need to go back to our, go back to our uh, folder and we're going to send an email. Now you're going to have to put your subscribers in and that is a good question for me. Let's see. If we go up here to subscribers. This is all the subscribers we have. Now it looks like uh, Hoisington, Russell, they've put in their own. 
So you would just have to start a new um, you know, like that theirs is their new letter. You do your your town newsletter, and then you'll go up here and add. They also have, if you're savvy, you don't have to do it one one person at a time. Um, you'll need a list in Excel um, of the first name, last name, email address. Huh? So that's a quick, quicker way to do it, but you've got to, to download it out of your, um, your email into Excel, and uh, then you'll upload it, you'll add it. And um, Gail says in the comments that um, we can help you do that. When you get to that point, we can help you get that set up so you can upload it. So. Yeah. Don't, gets, don't panic that, oh, no, you're going too fast on this part. We can help yeah, you with this part. Yeah, when you're ready. Mary Beth, yes. where, do, where do the emails come from? From their, their address book. If you're in Google, you've got an address book. If you in Yahoo, whatever you're using. So I think Patty's asking, where do you compile email um, addresses from? Because you are sending information about library business, you can um, pull those email addresses from your patron accounts on Koha or whatever um, online catalog you're using. However, I recommend um, having people sign up for the newsletter and going from there. Uh, just because um, some people aren't gonna be happy that you took their email that they gave you to, to send this kind of information out. But you can go into Koha and um, export your patron list and then import that into Library Aware. Okay. So once you have your list, um, we're gonna do it by interest group and then they're all listed here. And I can set it up here. Um, Currently, there are no subscribers there. And then if I want, um, if I need to add somebody and I don't have them in my list already, you could do that there. But that's all it is, is once you get your subscribers in, you, you schedule it. You can do it right now, or I could schedule it for tomorrow um, at eight in the morning. And, I'll do that. I won't do it to them though. <laughs> I'll just do it to me. Once you get your email um, subscribers list set up, then it's going to be really easy. It takes, yeah, a, it, it takes a little bit of time to get that sub subscribers list set up. Um, Deanna asks, could we send one e-blast asking if they would like to subscribe to a newsletter? Um, you could do that or you could do uh, post on your Facebook page and say, let us know if you'd like to be on our newsletter email list. I think that would probably be a better way to do it. But um, they did give you their email for library news. So they did give you permission there. And as Gail said that there should be an unsubscribe button at the bottom of each e-blast that goes out. So if they don't want it anymore, they can unsubscribe. And if you get a call about that, you can also ha direct them to the bottom of the email to unsubscribe. So this is what it will look like. I've already scheduled our um, closings for the year. And so when it gets to be the week before Thanksgiving, this will be sent out on 1118 and um, at 8 a.m. in the morning. And I've already got it on here and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, but that's what it'll look like. Your, your uh, newsletter, your e-blast will be at the top there for when it's going to be scheduled um, by the date and um, you'll be ready to go. But we'll be happy to walk you through that. Um, the other thing is if you want to send it to Facebook, that's um, 
something that we have to sit up for you if you don't have it already. Um, but once you're in the system as wanting to do um, Facebook <laughs> posts, um, we put your media account in there and then you'll go find it and it's just that quick. It'll post right to your account. And what happens if I accidentally select the wrong library to post my Facebook post on? That is a good question. That's never happened, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> this is Gail. What yes. I usually, um, I am the silent admin on all of the library's Facebook pages. And if you want to post to Library Aware, I do need to be the admin on there. What I usually do is because I get all the messages and all the notices and things like that you guys get. Um, and your, I follow all of your libraries. And so if you've posted something to, on, and the default is Facebook status, Central Kansas Library System, that's usually where it gets posted to. I will just go and share it to your own library page for you. Um, and then I will tell you what I did and remind you the right way to do it next time. So it's, it happens a lot when you first get started and then after that it doesn't anymore. Yeah. There you go. And yes, that was the dog drinking if you heard her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my little tidbit. Um, I'd encourage you to, to look through their new items though. They, they, they're, they're very um, current, a lot of current things that you probably, you know, will be doing anyway. They've got those um, when, you, when you go in and look at uh, folders, that front page. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd say um, you've got lots of fun stuff in there. I'd use it. Well, we are just nearing the end of the hour. We have a few more minutes. Any final comments, Michael, Patty, or Christy? There was one thing I wanted to um, to, to share. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing when you start using Libraryware because there are two different um, interfaces that are used when you're designing items. You might have noticed when Christy was doing her newsletter instead of the left-hand column that had a bunch of things like adding images and dragging and dropping text, it just had things along the very top in a gray toolbar. And that is the older interface that is still used by some of the older templates, whereas most of the newer ones will have the drag and drop, which is what I was showing you on my screen. But um, they do look a little bit different. And so if you run into any issues with that, please let us know and we'll be happy to show you how to use either one of those interfaces. Thank you. And Patty, any final words? Don't be afraid to play. Um, part of it is um, you, you have to be brave enough. And then if I were to give you one single piece of information or single tip on, on making a flyer or creating a document is hand it to someone that is not associated with what you want to do. Whether that might be your spouse at home, it might be your daughter who lives in another state, but they're not keen on the library world. And so if they can read it and understand it, you've done well and you've, you've, you've met your, your um, patron. But if they send it back and go, huh? Um, or if they send it back with proofreader marks or with um, notations of misspellings, don't take those as failure. Take those as learning opportunities. Because the best thing you can do is have somebody else look at it and interpret what you're trying to say and make certain that your message is um, clean and clear and to the point. You want to save your patrons time just as much as you want to save yourself time. Every click that you make on Library Aware is a little more time in your day. And I know that you're not getting rich off of this, but we want your time spent as library professionals to be spent serving your patrons. This is Gail. 
Go ahead. I would say that there are three mistakes that I see with new users and they're all super easy to fix. The first one is maybe you don't remember the branding. The second one is you'll post it to the wrong place on Facebook. But the biggest mistake we see is that you forget to go into your folder to create an item. And you know what? We can fix that too. Just have fun with this. This is an amazing tool. I would have given my eye teeth, and there they are, eye teeth to have something like this when I was actively working and creating flyers. Thank you, everybody. Good job. And it's, it's always good to have this one that does the, the graphic design part for you. It picks out the, this color scheme and the fonts, which you can change if you want, but it makes all those little choices a lot easier to make and gives you a more cohesive themed flyer so it doesn't seem so chaotic and so random. It seems like a well thought out, almost professional <laughs> publication. All right, um, any last thoughts before we call it quits for the day? If, if you really are struggling and you're not sure where to start, please contact one of us and we'll connect you to the right staff member to help you learn how to do this the right way because we find that when you learn the right way first, you spend less time being frustrated and more time being um, able to serve your patrons. And that's what you're there for. You're amazing library professionals and don't forget that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording.